god, look who's back! Well, I believe it's those adorable Gilmore girls. My, how we have missed them. It was one of the most beloved television shows of its time. Really? 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 Okay, no word now. For seven seasons, Gilmore Girls built a rabid fan base with an amazing ensemble cast and a language all its own. So I guess I'll just put on my red, white, and blue leotard, grab my golden lasso, and fly the invisible plane on over? Now, nearly 10 years after they first said goodbye, EW is bringing the cast of Gilmore Girls together once again to celebrate their highly anticipated return to Stars Hollow. What are you waiting for? Heartache? Laughter? Communism? All in one neat package. The following program. Modern style. Gilmore Girls was created back in 2000 by Amy Sherman Palladino, a veteran TV writer best known for her work on the hit comedies Roseanne and Veronica's Closet. Amy Sherman Palladino was actually in a pitch meeting with the WB. She had a bunch of really kind of fully formed great ideas, and when they didn't seem too into those ideas, she at the last minute kind of threw out this idea for a mother and her daughter who are more like best friends. And they loved it, they bought it, but of course she hadn't written yet. Sherman Palladino immediately went to work on the pilot while vacationing in the picturesque rural New England town of Washington Depot, Connecticut. She's from the valley. She's not used to a small Connecticut town in fall where everyone knows one another and goes to the diner and gets their own coffee. She kind of just started filling in the blanks. What if I said it here? What if she worked at an inn? Because I'm staying in an inn. And slowly, Gilmore Girls was born. The heart of the pilot was the relationship between the two Gilmore girls, who were separated by only 16 years. Lorelai, a single free-spirited mother, and Rory, her studious daughter. You know what's really special about our relationship? You really understand boundaries. So tell me about the guy. Mom. I love everything about Rory. Rory was just very different because she was a young girl on television who, while she had a boyfriend, she didn't really care about boys that much. She loved her mom. She loved books. She wanted to go to Harvard. She wanted to learn, and that was really cool and something that wasn't really on TV at the time. Behold, in theaters now, the thing that reads a lot. I remember reading the pilot script and immediately identifying with this character that was so different from any other young women on television at the time. Kind of instantly having a take on her. It's the rare case when you have something so well drawn out that that you can connect to that way. Alexis Waddell wasn't a well-known actress at all when Gilmore Girls started. I mean, she had been a model before, and her agency basically went to her and said, listen, why don't you audition for this show? You know, it's the character of Rory Gilmore, et cetera. And she just nailed the audition. Wow. This is just like that Christmas that I got a full set of illustrated encyclopedias. I wanted them. My character is not worried about fitting in. I don't think that's ever something she really was concerned with. She had her own individual goals. That's what she was focused on, even as a teenager. I got a job. <gasps> what time? Tonight? I leave in three days. And then as she got older, I mean, she certainly had an awareness of the world and a participation in it, but she was not trying to do what everyone else was doing. Rory, please put down that cup of coffee. You do not want to grow up to be like your mom. Sorry. Too late. Lauren Graham was definitely one of these actresses on the rise. She had done a ton of guest starring spots. She was on Law & Order. Detectives Briscoe and Curtis, hi. Sorry I'm late. I'm Lisa Lundquist, VP of Production. She did a stint on Caroline in the City. I have had the greatest day of my whole life. I got my job back, and they found a compatible pig heart for my dad. Oh. So when she got Gilmore Girls, this was a huge moment in her career. I had heard about this script, but I hadn't read it. They had cast you already ready and they were finally willing to see me in second position and sort of take a chance. It was very fast. I like came in and read for it and then I think we started shooting like the next day. It was like a very quick process. I just want you to remember three things while you're sitting up there. I love you. You're the greatest kid in the world and you're in a skirt. Keep your knees closed. Bye. Hey, this is good advice. This character just has so much joy. The world view is so kind of positive and excited. I loved that, you know, given this sort of repressed upbringing she may have had that she never would have felt like a victim, she never blamed anybody else, she was just kind of on her own and knew that person and was excited to see kind of where she would go. There was still one more Gilmore girl left to cast, the matriarch of the family, Lorelai's stern wealthy mother, Emily. Lorelai 
came from a very kind of strained relationship with her mother, Emily. It was very interesting to show that in contrast to the relationship with Rory, because she and Rory were best friends first and mother-daughter second, and she and Emily we're not even best friends at all. God forbid you should have a different opinion or you don't think it works in this space or you just get tired of waking up every morning with those horrifying animals staring at you. She's just upset. Stop talking to the dog! I hit this script and it's funny and it's clever and it's intelligent and, and I kept flipping it over and looking at the thickness of it because it was too thick to be a sitcom. And I said, could this possibly be an hour show and this funny? So I fell in love with that. Kelly Bishop had been in Dirty Dancing. She won a Tony for her work on a chorus line, and she actually just came in and really won the hearts of everyone as Emily Gilmore. I told her, mission still plays around, you know. Well, of course, you know, that's why your weight goes up and down 30 pounds every three months. <laughs> oh, oh, Ruthless woman. I think what I like the best about Emily, I played wealthy women before, is that she was just so mean. <laughs> She was just so awful. I only wish I'd remember to call her a cocktail waitress. Ooh, ooh, that's my mother's version of the C word. <laughs> I frankly, this is not going to endear me with anyone, but I'm not madly in love with terribly wealthy women. I find them <laughs> vapid and superficial oh and annoying and entitled. So I, it's great fun to play a character like that because I made her vapid and superficial and annoying. I did all the things I to make her as unattractive as possible. From day one, the success of the show was riding on the strength of the supporting characters, the colorful residents of Stars Hollow. Faded paint is a bad reflection on the whole town. Whatever happened to giving up? The most eligible bachelor in town was the handsome diner owner, Luke Dane. You okay? Yes, I'm fine. You don't look fine. Well, thank you. I just meant you look concerned. Preoccupied. You look concerned. Well, I'm not. It's fine. You just look it. Right out of the gate, it's chemistry. That indescribable, overpowering chemistry, which I mean, we all know what that is. You look nice. You look nice, too. Scott Patterson was also not really a well-known actor. He was the sponge-worthy guy on Seinfeld. Do you think you're sponge-worthy? Yes, I think I'm sponge-worthy. I think I'm very sponge-worthy. He was cast as the grumpy but lovable diner owner, Luke. Red meat can kill you. Enjoy. Jared Padalecki was very young when he was cast on Gilmore Girls, so he was kind of a new actor at the time, a fresh face, if you will. And he came in and was cast as Rory's first very sweet boyfriend, Dean. All right, guess what's in each hand? You get the soda. OK. In this hand, you have. Dean kind of just went with his feelings um, in a simple way, but his simplicity and his, his, uh, his connection with his feelings uh, meant a lot. Dean was the perfect first boyfriend. He was very sweet. He always put Rory first. He was friends with Lorelai as well. He hung out with both of them, and that was a big factor, I think, in why people liked him. Doesn't he look like a Dean? Yeah, of all the people standing in this room, he looks most like a Dean. Milo Ventimiglia uh, was in a show called Opposite Sex. He was so well cast as Jess on Gilmore Girls. He had to be the antithesis of Dean. Potlucks and Tupperware parties aren't really my thing. Too cool for school, huh? Yes, that is me. He really came in as kind of bad boy Jess Mariano, a role that was actually written for him by Amy and just kind of stole the show. I think what Jess also represented was a bit of a mirror for Rory. He had the smarts that she did. He had the knowledge of literature that she did. And I think the way he applied his intelligence drove her absolutely crazy. Just can't wait for that learning to begin. Hey, are we gonna do some of those Schoolhouse Rock songs? I'll be right there, Jess. Oh, hurry. Mine is a terrible thing to waste. Matt Zucri had been on a show called Hack, and he joined Gilmer relatively late into its run. He was actually another one who Amy kind of wrote the role for him. He came on as Logan Huntsberger, Rory's college boyfriend. How much you want to bet? All the money in my purse, plus a million dollars. Better have that million bucks ready when I get back, and I'll accept coins. Logan is an incredibly spontaneous and impulsive character. You can move in with me. What? I think that was the best part of their relationship is that spontaneity and that uh, impulsiveness that, that Logan tried to bring into Rory's life to, to push her to be the best that she could possibly be. The role of Lorelai's quirky best friend, Suki St. James, went to then unknown Melissa McCarthy. Very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> is something burning? My bangs earlier. She was always like setting things on fire and dropping things and she was just this brilliant chef and Lorelai's best friend. 
she is the heart of the show at times. This was her first big breakout. A lot of people don't realize she was Suki before she was Melissa McCarthy. A great chef does not have the client decorate his own cupcakes. Have a juice box. Hey, we're talking! Keiko Agena was a little bit known for her role in Felicity when she was cast on Gilmore Girls, but she was probably better known for being cast at the age of 27 to play a high schooler when she had the part of Lane, Rory's best friend. He kissed me. I'm so jealous, that's it. I've got to get some dumb, ugly friends. I have to go tell my mom. Call me later. Okay. It was an audition like other auditions that you're able to get, but my feeling towards it honestly was, wow, this is an amazing project for whoever gets it. Because <laughs> I thought it wasn't quite, you know, it was, as people know already, I was a lot older than this character, and I found out on the phone, and I had to hug like the next person I saw, which happened to be the second AD on Felicity, and I was like, I got it! <laughs> and uh, I think he was like, uh, great! <laughs> Gilmore Girls premiered on October 5th, 2000. The show soon became one of the WB Network's highest rated series, winning over audiences with a barrage of pop culture references and fast paced dialogue. Come out eventually like the Iran Contra scandal. So you're Oliver North. No, I'm Fawn Hall. Mom. Well, she's much prettier. The pilot was plenty long, and we talked fairly quickly, and you know, the dialogue's really entertaining and, and bubbly. Mom? Oh. You're happy. Yeah. Did you do something slutty? I'm not that happy. <laughs> just such a good pilot. Yeah. Because <laughs> we read so many of them every year. Just really well thought out. The characters are so wonderfully like drawn, and they're funny, and they're complex. Not only did we fall in love with kind of these central characters, but we also had these secondary characters, the townies, which really made Stars Hollow what it was. I was so impressed by all of them. I always love the town troubadours and um, just that kind of color that it gives the, you know, the town that makes it feel like no other place, you know? They're all really important to the color of Stars Hollow. And I love Gypsy. Played by Rose Abdu. I'm on your side, Lorelai. Whose secret subtext always was that she's a little in love with Lorelai. Maybe that's why I love her. We chicks gotta stick together. She's like, I think I'm in love with Lorelai. I, I like that. <laughs> I hope I didn't reveal too much. Each boyfriend brought a unique quality that she needed to move move forward in her life. Either you are Team Dean, or you are Team Jess, or you are Team Logan. There is no crossover. Oh, hi. You really like my table, don't you? I was just, uh... Getting to know my daughter. You're... Are you my new daddy? For seven seasons, Gilmore Girls impressed critics and earned a loyal, adoring fan base. Get out of here. I will not get out of here. The show's foundation was built around the three Gilmores, and from the start, creator Amy Sherman Palladino set the table with a weekly ritual that ensured the family came together every episode. There they are. Hi, Mom. The infamous Friday night dinners got started because Rory wanted to go to Chilton, which was this expensive private school. In the pilot, Lorelai had to borrow money from her parents. I'll get the checkbook. On one condition. In exchange, they had to go to Friday night dinner every Friday night. Rory, I would love to spend Saturday with you. Great. Well, I'm, I'm just sorry that I'm, I'm going to miss it. Eat your artichoke, Lorelai. So much weird food we had to eat. There was like, Emily was always serving like quail or I don't know, something that was like going to be real congealed. Eat your food. Oh, my, I think one of them's still alive. Remember the one where Amy wanted a shot that went all the way around the table so the camera never stopped moving? That was had to be extremely choreographed. Cut her some slack, Mom. Rory was going through something terrible. Life is full of terrible things, Lorelai. I remember sort of that technical thing to get the, the feeling of this argument that is all one piece. Some of Emily's best singers were said over dinner. I've always wanted to see the Atlantic City boardwalk. I'll save you a trip. Tip an overflowing trash can on your front porch and walk up and down on it. Does oi with the poodles already come out of dinner? If you put oi and poodle together in the same sentence, you'd have a great new catchphrase, you know? Like, oi with the poodles already. Yeah, that was a funny random conclusion to like a part of a conversation that kind of yeah. led nowhere except there. We are invited to Suki's wedding. Oh, how nice. When is it? A week from Sunday. Oh, so it's a pity invite. Ha. Boy, with the poodles already. It really stuck with people. Legions of devoted fans were also heavily invested in Rory's love life. 
One of the reasons people love Gilmore Girls so much is the relationships. Either you are team Dean, or you are team Jess, or you are team Logan. There is no crosser. I was always on team Dean, to be honest. If I had to make a choice, I would be uh, team Jess. Each boyfriend brought a unique quality that she needed to move, move forward in her life. They were all interesting for different reasons. I mean, the three of them are such different people that bring out very different things in my character, um, which I think is why it was so great that, that Amy kind of conceived them that way. I'm Dean. Hi. Oh, Rory, me. That's, that's me. The first one, I guess, is like her first love, so she's sort of swept away and it's very impactful for her. I mean, she kind of has a long road to kind of get over that one. Everything is so perfect and so wonderful that you almost feel sad because nothing can ever be this good again. If I were to think of how uh, Dean uh, affected Rory's life, it would be the same way a first love or a first relationship affects all of our lives. Hey. Hey. I'm Rory. Yeah, I figured. Jess kind of is like a shock to the system a little bit. It's like a completely like 180 from where she was, so she's trying to discover another side of her personality and be challenged more intellectually, have fun, you know, kind of in a different, more grown-up way. You're still going to Yale? Yes, I am. It's really close to here. 22.8 miles. How'd you know that? Do you Yahoo? They loved each other. They totally loved each other. When someone is challenging and you want them so bad as well, you know, it's, it's going to absolutely drive you nuts. Well, this would definitely qualify as a cute meet if we hadn't already met. Logan, hey, this is nice and embarrassing. Logan to me always seemed like it's her version of, you know, someone like what she thinks her dad was like. Rory, you got a good man here. I've always seen Rory as, as this incredibly independent woman. And I think that that's what uh, Logan loves about Rory, is that uh, Rory doesn't need anything from anybody. His life is more like what Lorelai and Christopher like their relationship, maybe this would have been what their life would have been like if they had stayed together or something like that. That's the most I've ever said about that. <laughs> Lorelai, this is ridiculous. The two of you aren't in high school anymore. I know. Lorelai had a few boyfriends on the show. Uh, Max Medina, Rory's English teacher, who we all loved. Digger, who was her father's business partner, who we all didn't really love. Of course, Christopher, who is Rory's father, who is really special to everyone. I think from day one, fans were rooting for Luke and Lorelai, and ultimately he was the guy who kind of stole her heart. So I said, you look good. We're not in fifth grade. You look good. Big deal. If they were instruments in an orchestra, they're very different instruments, but kind of together they make a, a weirdly appealing sound. She'd probably be first violin. I also think maybe oboe. I don't know. This is why I hate dating. Well, unless you want to be Mountain Man all your life, you've got to abide by the rules. Just speaking of the pilot, you know, from the very beginning, you kind of see his gruffness brings out her sort of flirtatiousness or something. How many cups have you had this morning? None. Plus? Five, but yours is better. You have a problem. Yes, I do. There's a chemistry there. Over time, they really connect. Junk. Angel. You've got wings, baby. They need each other <laughs> as balance, you know. He, she, she lightens him up and he kind of roots her a little bit. But it took a while to get there. I don't have very many people in my life who are in my life. Blame it on the writers, because we wanted it right away. I think it's good storytelling. If you know you have something that combustible uh, and that incendiary, milk it. Just drag it out as long as you can, because that's the soul of drama. I should go. That kind of tension, that kind of concentrated tension, boy, you can stretch that out for a while. And she did. I mean, it took four years, so hats off to Amy. What are you doing? Will you just stand still? During the show's seven-year run, there were 154 episodes. While most were memorable, a few were unforgettable. My favorite episode of Gilmore Girls was probably I Love You, You Idiot. I feel like an idiot. Why? Because I come all the way out here and I, I see you with him. I think we've all been in a situation where we feel like maybe we're out of place, maybe we're not welcome, but we put ourselves out there. Dean got to experience putting himself out there, going to a rich school and saying like, I don't belong here, but I'm gonna go because I care about this person. And then feeling like, oh, here comes the shame. And then Rory comes and says it because I, I, I love you, you idiot. Dean! What? Stop! Why? Because I love you, you idiot. 
And it was a nice sort of like a, a redeeming moment. I have a favorite one, I always bring it up. Only because uh, it was so on Emily, and it was, it was when uh, Richard's mother died, and I read the letter and found out that she had been trying to talk him out of marrying me, and then I went on a, a, a binge. I was just drunk in every scene. I was smoking cigarettes. It was like my, my Tennessee Williams episode. I told Tilda to take the day off. Nothing's happening here. So uh, that one I enjoyed. You, you might want to go get ready now. No one says we have hours. <gasps> want a drink? Today I learned how to make mojitos. Mojitos. We're going to have mojitos. <laughs> so that was my favorite one, just because it was so bizarrely uh, out there from Emily. I remember specific moments in an episode called Teach Me Tonight where they go get the ice cream. So if we go get ice cream, In cones. Then you'll be a perfect student for the rest of the night. In cones. In cones. I'm dripping here. Hold the wheel. I can't hold the wheel. You're driving. The person who's driving has to hold the wheel. That's the first thing he teach you in driver's ed. I remember when Jess dressed up like Luke just to bust his chops. What do you think you're doing? Working. So you think this is funny, huh? I'm sorry. I thought this was a uniform. Those are some of the funniest things. That's it. Get upstairs and change. When it comes to picking their favorite episodes, most fans steer clear of the show's final season. Was season seven great? Absolutely not. You will not find any Gilmore Girl fan who's like, yeah, season seven. By then, creator Amy Sherman Palladino was no longer running the show due to a contract dispute. The ratings slipped throughout the year, and by season's end, the future of Gilmore Girls was uncertain. We didn't know if it was the end of the show or not. Although no one knew it at the time, the last episode of season seven would be the series finale. I just feel like I need more time. Ew. The whole town throws a going away party for Rory because she's graduated and she's got this job covering the Obama campaign. So Luke gathered the entire town of Stars Hollow and threw her this epic going away bash, complete with like an enormous tarp because it was raining. In three days I'd be leaving for who knows how long. It could be two months, it could be two years. The final scene of the series finale of Gilmore Girls is so poetic. It's just Lorelai and Rory. It's the early hours of the morning. Rory's about to leave home. I remember the last shot of the finale and Lee was doing the crane shot out the window of Luke's. She was, our director, not knowing if it was the end, was trying to mimic the crane shot that ends the opening title sequence. So we did that and it's the two of us at a table mm -hmm. in Luke's. Mm -hmm. And then we said goodbye to everybody, and then we didn't know <laughs> what was going to happen. The show ended so abruptly, uh, and no one had a chance to savor the end or anything like that. I think a lot of fans, and also cast members, never felt like they actually got their ending of the show because Amy Sherman Palladino obviously left at the end of season six, and so they never got to end it how they wanted to. A lot of people kind of feel like maybe they never got their conclusion. We could never have predicted we'd be here doing it again, and that's because generations have continued to, to find it. Oh, so our Friday night dinners are going to continue then? After seven critically acclaimed seasons, Gilmore Girls went off the air in 2007. It's too soon. But hope for a return to Stars Hollow was kept alive by frequent rumors of a revival. Thanks for opening up the place. Hey, I gotta take care of my best customers. Then, in January 2016, nine years after the finale, Netflix confirmed a four-episode, six-hour reboot of the series, Gilmore Girls, A Year in the Life. This is my time to be rootless. And you're okay with this vagabond existence she's leading? She's Jack Kerouac. She's on the roading it. Pass the peyote. But after you pass the peyote, what bathroom will you use to throw up in? The show's creator, Amy Sherman Palladino, was back at the helm, along with the entire principal cast, with one major exception. Sadly, Edward Herman, who played Emily's husband, Richard Gilmore, passed away in 2014. Ed looms large. <laughs> Ed looms large in life, and he looms large over these episodes. We could never have predicted we'd be here doing it again, and that's because generations have continued to, to find it. And so one of the cool things about going back to do it for Netflix was people were excited already. <laughs> There's a debate going on whether or not to take the phone booth out. 
But where would Superman change when he comes to save our town from Ben Affleck? I made the same excellent point. Coming back was just like every day was, I mean, really, really like a party. Delicious. Explain to me again who that person is. It's something in life that doesn't happen very often where you get another chance to do something that you love in a new way. There was always something missing, and Gilmore Girls was great, and through all seven seasons it was great, but we were able to finally tell the complete story and put the period that was supposed to be there in the first place. So I think it'll, it'll help complete the circle. Amy Sherman Palladino knew how the show was going to end a long time ago. In fact, she had the four final words of the entire series planned, but of course, they didn't executive produce that season, so now we're finally going to get it in the revival. And we'll tell them to you right now. <laughs> Those well-guarded final four words will soon bring the story to an end, but the Gilmore Girls will continue to capture hearts for years to come. I think the show is timeless. I think the, the way that Amy had been able to capture this town and these women and these characters, it was something that was elegant that's going to last through centuries. This is going to be one of those shows that people continue to find and continue to enjoy over time. Isn't it wonderful? I had no perspective of that at the time. I don't think I could tell what people's perception of the show was, especially when we were still filming, but um, years later, when people say how oh, it's affected their lives and, you know, they have those kinds of stories, then I think I think it becomes now evident. is a time when yeah, we Yeah, maybe can. now. <laughs>